With Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes finally in theaters, we now have four Planet of the Apes movies in this reboot series. So today I'm giving you my ranking of all four movies. Hello everybody, my name is Jesse and welcome back to my channel. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes was a great, pleasant surprise. I thought it was a fantastic addition to this reboot series of Planet of the Apes movies. There's now four of them. Today I'm giving you my ranking of all four rebooted Planet of the Apes movies. In last place I have Rise of the Planet of the Apes, I think. This is a really strong start to this, uh, I mean, it, at the time it was a trilogy and now uh, I, with King of the Planet there's four. I think this is a really strong start to this new franchise. It does a great way, it does a great job of introducing us to these characters, making us care about them. Um, Caesar is a fantastic lead character, and even just within the span of this movie, you see him grow a lot, and it's even better when you watch this movie and then watch all the others and see how much he truly does grow from Rise of the Planet of the Apes to War for the Planet of the Apes. And... He doesn't uh, talk a lot in this movie, and, he, and that's also what makes this one kind of fun to look back on is, again, you see how much he grows. I mean, he goes from saying almost nothing, just simple words like no in this movie to like full-on complete sentences in the third one, showing how much his intelligence has grown and how much he's learned. I think James Franco is a really interesting uh, lead human character as well, and I think this movie just does a great job of setting up this um, so-called Planet of the Apes with Caesar recruiting all of these other apes and primates um, from the place he was being held and kind of teaching them his ways and teaching them that some humans are bad and by the end of this movie they kind of escape and form their own civilization. So I just think I, overall I think this is a really great start to this franchise. In third place I have Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. This is the newest one that just came out and I, if you saw my review on it you know that I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I loved the world building that they did with kind of introducing us to this new world, these new characters that take place several hundred years after Caesar and his uh, civilization of apes. And I think uh, Proximus is a really strong villain in this movie, and I just like that they were able to introduce us to new characters and new leads. And I think um, the one drawback on this movie for me was that it just didn't ha have the characters from the original trilogy. And it just, I couldn't connect as much with the characters in this movie because I knew nothing about them. Now, I think the director and the producers have said that they have plans for more of these movies. And so if Noah... Uh, the main character from King of the Planet of the Apes ends up being the lead in that one. I think he could grow on me a bit more. Um, I, but I just, I really enjoyed this newer movie in the franchise. The motion capture and the CGI looks better than ever. It looks absolutely incredible. So, like, lifelike. It, it's crazy. It's honestly insane how far technology really has come even just from the first Rise of the Planet of the Apes movie. It's insane what they were able to do with that in this movie. In second place, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. This is one, uh, it's set a full decade after Rise of the Planet of the Apes. The simian flu has wiped out most humans. So apes are kind of starting to become more the of the dominant species on Earth. And uh, humans are mostly wiped out um, and this movie kind of goes 
kind of starts to delve into the human versus ape a lot more, and even ape versus ape. And you have uh, Caesar who thinks humans are can be trusted and they're fine, and then Koba who doesn't trust any humans and really becomes the villain uh, by the third act of this movie. And that leads to a battle of kind of ape versus ape, uh, Caesar going against Koba because they have very opposing views. And I just, I, I love this movie. Uh, Matt Reeves is a fantastic director. He did The Batman. This movie has, goes a lot more in on the action and the, I mean, the, this movie just ups the ante on everything from the first movie. You see the characters have already grown a decent amount. Caesar's already speaking more clearly. And uh, I just like seeing the, the face-off between Caesar and Koba. I think it's interesting. But in first place for me is War for the Planet of the Apes. This movie is absolutely fantastic. Everything is at its best in this movie. The, mo the, the motion capture, the, the action sequences, and the character development. Everything is awesome. Woody Harrelson is a great villain and they do enough with his character to make you understand him and know where he's coming from. And even Caesar in this movie. And what I loved what they did, I loved what they did with Caesar's character in this movie because he does have a phenomenal arc from Rise of the Planet of the Apes to this movie. And in this movie, they do, I mean, Caesar in this movie starts to become kind of, he needs to be the leader. He needs to step up. He needs to be more of a leader than he's ever been. And he has to make some really crucial choices in this film. And sometimes he doesn't know what to do. And he's haunted by Koba in this movie after killing him in the previous movie because he had to. He's kind of haunted by these visions of him as Koba's sort of is like this like ghost almost playing his like kind of subconscious like his real thoughts talking to himself he's Caesar's haunted by that and I think those two things really humanize Caesar in this movie and make him like he is an ape but he it, I just think it really humanizes him as a character. He's going through things that we as humans sometimes go through and it just really shows how much he's growing uh, emotionally as well as just his overall intelligence. He is getting smarter and he's, gro he's grown so much. He's able to have full-blown conversations with the Colonel played by Woody Harrelson. The movie takes place 15 years after Rise of the Planet of the Apes. So it is a long reach stretch of time. And they just, I love uh, that they show how much he's grown in this movie. There you go. That is my ranking of the four rebooted Planet of the Apes movies. I love all four of them. What do you think? What would your ranking be? Let me know down in the comments. And that's all I have for you today. Until my next video, like this one, subscribe to my channel, and keep watching movies. Goodbye.